Today on Coding 101, oh my glob, we're talking about some pearl get form. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Coding 101 is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Coding 101 is brought to you by Hover.com. Hover is the best way to buy and manage domain names. It's simple, honest, and easy to use. For 10% off your first purchase, go to Hover.com and enter the promo code C1017. Welcome to Coding 101. It's the Twitch show where we let you into the world of the Code Monkey. I'm Father Robert Ballasare. And I am Shannon Morris. And for the next 30 minutes, we are going to get you all learned it up and everything you need to know to be a Pearl Code Warrior. That's right. Now, we thankfully got past regex. We, oh, we, we put yes, regular expressions finally. in the back. People were figuring <laughs> out. And we got to something really, really practical and really, really useful. And that we is did. how do you dynamically generate web pages with Pearl? Very Crazy. useful. So there is a lot more advanced information about this other than just knowing Perl code. You also have to know how to set up your own yes. web hosting. <laughs> you have to make sure that it accepts Perl code mm -hmm. and that it translates correctly to the client whenever they open up your web page. <sighs> yeah. yeah one, of, one of the things that uh, people were asking, well, how come we didn't show people what CGI was and how do you set up your web? It's going to differ depending on which hosting provider you use. Yeah. In fact, uh, we had a very nice demo all set up and uh, our hosting provider took a dump no. about 20 minutes ago. Thank you, one in one you, you took a very wonderful ah. demonstration and just kind of ripped it apart. But but yes, I mean, yeah, you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work to get these scripts running, but uh, I'm sure any hosting provider will have a, a detailed FAQ on how you get CGI working on your site. So what do you say let's get started with some snubs compiled? I like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on compiled. <laughs> so first off, I wanted to show you our Google Plus community uh, viewer submission. So this one is from Joe. I pulled it up over here. And this is over in Google Plus. It's plus.google.com slash twitcoding101 if you want to join. Uh, he just decided to send over a dynamic web page that uses regular expressions to determine which browser you have. So he already linked us to his example, so we didn't have to put it on our own uh, web hosting service. And it just says, what what browser are you using? Welcome, local server, and then you're, you appear to be using Chrome. Now, if I hit view source right here, you will see that all we see is the HTML. Mm -hmm. But he's also sent us the code. So if I open up his code right here, and I'll maximize that. There we go. Okay, so you can see that he has Perl code in here. He tells it that it is going to be HTML. And then you scroll down and you see that it asks, it tries to figure out what kind of browser that you're running. Now, of course, this is a little bit advanced. He's using this dollar sign agent thing right here. Right, right. And then he just closes it out with slash body slash HTML. Right. But this is actually a really good example of server-side scripting versus yes. client-side scripting. Because if it was client-side scripted, you'd actually see the code in the page displayed in your browser. Exactly. Instead, you see what runs on the server, not is the final product that gets delivered to your browser. And it works. It Yay. works. So thank you, Joe, for sending that over. And I also had an example for you as well. And let me go find this real quick. Here's my code. And where did I put it? I think it's over here. Aha, here we go. OK, so in my example, all it says is welcome to Coding 101. Watch our show at this page. And you can click on the page, and it goes to our Twit Coding 101 website. Now, if I view source for this, all you see again is just the HTML. Just so the I wrote link. out Welcome to Coding 101, and I made a little H href link right here for Coding 101, this page, and then a couple of different font types. I guess I could have added a little bracket right here to make it enter onto a new right, line. Right, if, if you wanted to. BR, yay. And then slash body slash HTML. Now, if I go into my code as well, and I think I pulled it up right here. Yeah. So very, very simple code. Perl code, content type is text HTML. And then we have down here the actual HTML. Right. Ta-da. And again, a really good. Uh, 
description, a really good it example is. of server-side versus client-side scripting. Uh, this is one of the things that we tried to drill into the audience in the last episode, and that is, if it's going to be client-side, mo most more likely than not, you'll see the actual scripting code yes. inside the browser. Exactly. That means it's executing on your computer. In, in your example, we needed to have a server that was set up properly, which is why it was horrible that 101 decided <laughs> to die. We right ended up putting it on one of Patrick's servers Yeah, instead. we had to drop it on Patrick's. <laughs> but it gets executed on the remote side, yes. and all you get is the finished product. And of course, you should be able to see the pros and the cons of doing it either way. If it's on the client computer, you have access to more things than you would if it's server side. That's true. But if it's server side, it also means you typically have a bit more security because they don't have to see any of the scripting code, they just see the finished product. And if you guys are confused about this, watch last week's episode of Coding 101. Patrick showed us examples of both with HTML as well as just with Perl code uh, so you can see the differences in the, in the sources. Absolutely, yeah. Now, uh, we are going to be getting into forms. Now, what? forms in HTML, they've been around since HTML has been around. Yay. And normally they're kind of ugly, right? You know, That's true, type there. this and hit this. <laughs> but forms are one of those basic ways to get information from the user. Just yes. like we would have user input inside of a, an actual compiled program on your computer. You, you see forms on any site you go to you these need, days. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's a basic part of, of coding for the web. However, we can combine forms from HTML with uh, a few things in Perl to give us dynamically generated pages depending on what a user has inputted. Oh, really? So we're going to show you how to do that, Ooh. but first, let's take a break because I want to talk a little bit about, oh, I don't know, domain hosting. Well, I think we have a pretty good one that you could check out. We do. We've got a vendor here. We have a, a sponsor of Coding 101 that has been around for years. In fact, their name is almost synonymous with the early web and that's Hover. Now, you may say, well, well, Padre, I don't remember Hover, but you do remember Two Cows. Two Cows was one of those repositories, one of those sources of data, of information that, uh, well, grew up with the web. Now, when you have a great idea, you want to secure a domain name for it. You want something catchy and something memorable to represent your online identity. Well, Hover gives you exactly what you need to get that job done. You'll find the perfect domain for your idea so that you can get started uh, working on it right away. Now, right now, Hover is having a sale on all new domain extensions through September 1st. The sale is for new and existing customers. Summer is the perfect time to start a new project, and every single new domain is deeply discounted with Hover, so you can choose whatever you'd like, .club, .ninja, .guru, .just about anything. Now, people love Hover, geeks, developers, designers, and programmers, because they know that they'll have the best tools and support for their domains. But you don't have to be an expert to get a domain. The, ser the service is really simple enough. Now, Hover takes all of the hassle and the friction out of registering your domain. It gives you an easy to use powerful interface to manage your domain so that anyone can do it. You can get the perfect domain name and start building your web presence right away. All you have to do is search for a few keywords and Hover will show you the best available options and suggestions. In fact, right now, Hover is a clean and simple website and what you can see Brian doing is just scanning through some domains that he may want for uh, his, his nom de plume as the cranky hippo. Now, in less than five minutes, you can find the domain that you want and get it up and running. That's what they're all about. They also offer a valet transfer service to make the process painless for free. Hover will take care of the entire process of transferring your domain and let you know when your domains are settled in your Hover account. They'll transfer all those DNS settings. No matter how many domain names you have, it's no additional cost. So if you're just fed up with your, with your domain host right now, your domain registrar, use Hover. They'll take care of all that backend stuff and get you to your domain bliss. Now, here's the big thing for me. Hover is honest. They don't believe in heavy-handed upselling. They include everything you need with your domain, no more and no less. They also include a custom email. You'll get a smart control panel so that you can do what you want with your domains, plus whose privacy is included free on every domain that supports it. Now, if you ever need it, Hover has the best customer support around. It's known for its no wait, no hold, no transfer phone service. Now, when you call, a real person is ready to help. And right now, they are offering you volume discounts. They'll give you a discount on your domain renewals, starting at just 10 domains and then going up in value from there. The idea is the more domains you have in your account, the less you have to pay to renew them. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to visit Hover today to register your domain. And for 10% off your first purchase, take advantage of their summer sale by going to Hover.com and using our promo code C. 
1017. We thank Hover for their support of coding 101. Now, Shannon, I, I, yes, I want to talk Roger. a little bit about uh, get. 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 I know some get. Get. Well, mine's more Linux. Got. <laughs> Linux. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a little Linux. Okay. So when we talk about for, uh, forms, we, we're basically going to be talking about stuff like this. If you go ahead and switch over to my computer, in fact, let me uh, let me uh, change the format here so that I so it's not so small because I know Teeny, people tiny. have really bad eyes. There we go. So this is this is like the oh, most yes. simple form what a form looks like in HTML, right? I remember doing this in the 90s. Yeah, you've got your <laughs> opening and your closing HTML and body tags, and then form. So it's just another HTML command. There's an form, action in there. Form, method, get, action, uh, and then you have the input name and the input type. That gives yes. you a button, right? Well, we're, we're going to show you exactly what goes into that. Now, Brian, if you come back to me. When, when we talk about HTML forms, we're really talking about two different possibilities of getting mm -hmm. information from the user. One is called a get, get and, and the, the second one is post. Post, exactly. Yeah. We're only going to be talking about get today, so we're going to we're, we're going to limit it to get. Next week we'll talk a little bit about post because they're they're different. They they kind of interchange a lot of the the characteristics, okay. but but the main thing to remember about get is all it does is it takes whatever the user has entered and appends it to the URL, the uniform. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Right. It sounds pretty simple. Really simple. So, for example, if you're using a, a get on a form. Uh, and inside of its uh, of its little action item, you've got the URL, the techstop.net. It's going to add to the end of the techstop.net whatever the user has entered, right. and that gives you a new URL. Easy. Okay. Really easy. Yeah. It, it, it will show you why you'd want to do that, but it's a very specific type, and it, it's very useful. Now, what we want to do is we want to use get to somehow get data from the user, from a form, and then push it through Perl so that Perl can do whatever ah. you want Perl to do with so it. So this is where Perl comes into play. This is where Perl comes into play. This is where Perl can do some dynamically generated web page magic. Ooh. Okay. okay. Now, how does it do that? Let me, let me show you how this works. So let's, for example, uh, we're going to go back to my computer. Uh, this, this right here, this web page is actually the result of this code. So this code has generated that. Okay, so very oh. simple. Yes. All it does is I've got name, question mark, and then I've got a button below it. And if I go to the the browser name question mark and the button below it. So it, it's let's say this is the name of the bunny. So I'm going to put Roger. Roger is the name of my bunny. And I click submit. Watch the address bar right here. Okay, oh. it's giving me an error because the page doesn't exist. Bunny name. But see, it just appended question mark bunny name equals Roger. Right. Now think back. I know you're on the web a lot. You've probably seen addresses like this. I it, have. Yeah. yeah. Anytime you do like a search. Yes. It just appends it to the end of the URL, right? And I've noticed if you just delete that ending after the question mark, you can just get back to it. It just goes right back size. to the beginning, right? Yeah. All that's that's a get. That's what it's done. So uh, let me see. I think I think YouTube does that. Well, not not really. Let's let's do Google. So Google does that. So if I'm searching for something, and let's say I'm searching for snubs, snubs. See, it did something. It appended to the end of that URL. Yeah, it did. My search term, right? So this this is just a this is just a version of that. This this is all it means. It means I'm going to take whatever the user has inputted and I'm going to drop it onto the end of, end of the URL. Now exactly. you're probably asking yourself, but Padre, what what use is that? Yeah, well, what what that's, are you going to do with it? Yeah, this is so far, stupid. I mean, <laughs> so it's got to. You're going to make your own search site. Well, maybe you are. <laughs> that's that's what we're going to be trying to do. We're going to show you how you could take that new URL that you've used get on a form in order to create, run it through Perl, mm -hmm. and then make it do something magical. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I want to see some magic. I do it too, too. But before uh, before in order for <gasps> us to do this magic, I think we need to bring in our code warrior. Oh boy, I'm yeah. ready. So let's, if you could hook up that satellite, uh, Brian. I believe we're <laughs> now going to bring in Mr. Patrick Delahanty. From Twit TV, our code warrior Patrick. Thank you for coming back. Oh, my pleasure. Coming here from the Starship or orbiting the Earth, yes. the uh, Twit Friendship Satellite. It's been it's been a very very long <laughs> the journey. The warp drive back there. Uh, yes, but the warp drive. <laughs> now, now, Patrick. So, uh, I mean, get and post on forms and HTML. It's not exactly advanced. I mean, you can look at a a form primer and you'll know how to make a form within like five minutes. Yeah. But. And Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was I exploded. Cool. That was part of the satellite beam. Uh, oh, okay. That was that was 
different. Apologies from the, uh, Sorry, the, the desk, technical the difficulties. Operators. But now that, Patrick, now that we've got this really weird looking URL, what do we do with it? Well, now that you can pass data from an HTML form to a script, the script is able to use that input, just like we were able to do back in the first couple episodes of this module, where we used standard input, except now we're submitting the data through a form instead of just, you know, typing it. coding it, it in, right? Yeah. So similarly, it's still treating it as input just from a form instead of a standard input from a user. Yeah, yeah, it's coming from a different source. That's the only cool. difference. Okay. And then we're outputting it to a web page instead of just the command line. Right. Yay. But but this is what you have to do, right? Because I mean people running your Perl script aren't gonna have your command line in front of them on their computers. Yes, exactly. They're gonna have that form. So that form is like the standard input. When we start playing with Perl, this is standard input but over the web. And it's gonna add it to the end of the of the URL so that when it, it runs the Perl script, the Perl script goes, Oh, there's my input. Take my input, run it through my, Got my it. code. My, That's my cool. All right, Patrick, show us how it works. All right, uh, now remember, we're not here to tell you how to do HTML. That's <laughs> not even programming, really. It's it's Careful. HTML. It's oh, markup. Come on. It's You're markup. Off a lot of people, Patrick. It's markup. <laughs> uh, so we're here to look at the Perl part of this. So I've just kept a very simple form. Uh, it's asking, what is your favorite animal? And I think I did this in week two, where we had the command line. Yes, you did. And uh, so Fine. here's the HTML code for this form. It's just get one input and then a submit button. Uh, and you can see I'm submitting the form element here, the input type, it's text, and the name is animal. Right. Now, Patrick, one of the important parts, uh, if you go ahead and blow up that screen a little bit, Brian, we, we want to see his code. Uh, the action part, that's what the form's going to do when you push that button. The action yes. is to call the URL cgi-bin c101 app26a.pl. So it's calling that Perl code. It's calling yep. that, exactly, that particular script, episode26a.pl, but it's going to append, after that question mark, everything that the user put into the form. Yes, and uh, it ends in .pl, that's what we're used to for Perl. You could also do .cgi. Right. Some uh, oh. different hosts have different requirements. Some want it to be certain ways. Right. Uh, you might have to make it executable. Which again is why we didn't show you how to do that because it's probably going to be wrong. You have to find out how your provider does it. Yeah, but these are just a few common things that you yeah. might have to check out. So I thought I'd mention them. Uh, so anyway, we've got this form and here's what it looks like. What's your favorite animal? Uh, of course, I'm going to enter bunny. <laughs> you can see I've typed that before. <laughs> Submit and this is example A result. Query string says animal equals bunny. You said bunny. Yes, bunnies are the best. Oh, this is cool. the same program we had before. I just made it work on the web. Exactly. I know, exactly. Brian. If you go up a little higher here, we see the the um, the URL, which I'm running my local MAME server again. But we've got CGI bin uh, C101 episode 26A dot PL. This, this is exactly code. the action where I told it to go. It's got the question mark. Animal equals right. bunny. It's got the name of the input, and then it's got the input itself. So if I look at the code for this, we'll go over here. I've got... Uh, so this is the example 26A code? Yes. Okay. So it starts off, it's got Perl. We set the content type to HTML, and then I just do an HTML header. This is nothing but setting the title of the page and the big Coding 101 text and the, the header text. But here's the meat of the program. We've got... Wow, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Uh, we've got the query, uh, and that's just setting the query string equal to this variable, so I don't have to type out query string every time because it's long. Uh, then I just print it out so I can sh show it, what that value is, where it, it printed out your query string says, and it said animal equals bunny. So query is the input from the user? Yes. This, okay. w for what I entered, it says animal equals bunny. Okay. And so what I did here, I looked at the length of the query string to make sure it's larger than zero to make sure something was entered. And if it is, I, I do this split on an ampersand. And what I'm doing is I'm splitting it so that every variable becomes a different uh, entry into this array. And then for each item in the array, I assign the name, which would be animal, and the value, bunny, and it splits oh. on the equals. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and then... Here, I just, um, 
kind of normalize the value. Right. So uh, just for the folks at home, yeah. what, what Patrick has done is, uh, remember, when it appends it to that URL, it's calling that particular script, so episode 26A, that script, and then it's handing it that entire chunk. So the uh, the name of the of the action and then what what animal. it was and then which and in this case it was animal, animal was bunny. equals bunny. But that's just coming in as a single string. Right. It's not like it's got two pieces of data. It's got so you have one to split piece of it data. Up because if you didn't, the entire value would be animal, animal equals, equals bunny. horse, animal equals bunny. Exactly. Whatever. Which yeah. is what his code does. So that that first part of the code, the first thing he does is he assigns everything to that variable called query. Ray for a raise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he breaks it apart, and he wants to break it apart so that he can manipulate it better. He can manipulate the name apart from the value. That makes sense. Yes. And uh, so uh, I did this, and this will be apparent in my next example of why I went through all this. Uh, but then it just says, okay, if this in animal, which is the, the uh, value I set, if it exists, then just set animal equals then this value just because I don't want to type all those brackets over and over. <laughs> and But if it's not there, then I tell animal equals nothing. So I haven't entered anything. It's nothing. Uh, and then it's the same script we had back in, I think, the third episode uh, yes. where it's if animal contains bunny or animal contains rabbit, then print out, you said animal. Yes, bunnies are the best. So you basically Else. just took your code and copied and pasted it in here. Exactly. This is the same code. So this is nothing new in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, once I've got the input, I can do whatever I want with it. It's just, uh, so what we're, what I'm showing here is how to get the input. Uh, and then this just ends with end of HTML, and I have a convenient link back so I can resubmit again and again. Right. So. We've got Dr. Morbius in the chat room who's saying, well, she's having difficulty figuring out, well, where's the print statement? How do you, where, how does it know where to print? All it's doing is it's printing an HTML file. That's what the script will do. It's printing an HTML file that will go to your browser. So it's just HTML. If you know how to do HTML, you know how to do the print statement out of Perl for dynamically generated web pages. Yeah. Now, the, the other interesting uh, thing about uh, Patrick's code here is that uh, if you remember from our lessons from C Sharp mm -hmm. and from Python, there was always a way to call a function or to call a method and you passed it a couple of variables, right? Yes. Because otherwise it would just do the same thing over and over. Yeah. That's that's essentially what we're doing. This is a way to pass the script, a piece of data from the user that can be anything that the user wants it to be and have it process that particular piece of data. Uh, so it I mean, makes sense. Yeah, if, if you start putting, I mean, this is one of the things that we wanted people to, to start doing after a couple of modules, which is you can overlay the languages on top of each other. And even though the syntax may look That's different, crazy. The, the ideas are going to be the same. Yeah, I've seen a lot of my coding friends be able to do that, put you know different languages all in the same oh, yeah. line of code. Yeah. And it, it totally confused me. I figured it would give you all sorts of errors, but it works in some cases. Yeah, once you, I mean, pretty much once you get a grasp of how programming languages work, all you need are a couple of reference sheets so that you go, oh, that's how I write it in C. This right. is how I write it in Python. This is how I write it in Perl. And boom, you're golden. <laughs> all right, Patrick, you've, you've got more for us. Yes. Uh, now, keep in mind, there's a million different ways to do things in Perl. So the way I'm doing it here, uh, I'm not using a Perl module because that we'll talk about that later, uh, but I wanted to show exactly how this works. Uh, so in my second example, I've got two input fields, favorite animal, and you get to name this animal, which I know everybody wants to do. So we'll say it is a cat. Luna. Schrodinger. <laughs> oh, that and uh, so we'll submit that, and I print the query string again. And I said, you said cat. Okay, whatever. I hope Schrodinger brings you joy anyway. Oh, uh, that's cute. Uh, so if we look at my script for that over which, here. Which we, you wrote this before. Uh, it's just, yes. this, is, this is just a regular expression. And exercise. so everything up here is exactly the same. Uh, I'm still getting the input from the query string. I'm uh, You're still separating it, it into different values. And here, you can see I have the same. If it's animal, then set that. And then I did if name. So I just have a second field. Uh, if I've entered name, set it to that. If I haven't, it's unknown. So ah, if I left okay. that field blank, it would come back and unknown. And then uh, it prints out the values down below. So it's just another field to look for in the, in yeah. the uh, URL. And if we look at the URL 
up on the top of the browser here, um, we can see it has oh. animal equals cat and name equals Schrodinger. And so it appended both of the form answers at yes, the end. Yes, and it puts the ampersand between everything. Yeah. And you can get really, really long. I mean, you've seen those, yeah. those, those URLs that just seem to go on forever. That's because they're appending all the data that has to get pushed to the scripting code. That's and cool. so, I mean, theoretically, I could change the cat's name here to Luna right in the command line without even submitting the form. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. And right. so it's changed here. Yeah. Because remember, oh my all, gosh, all, my mind. All, the get, all the get function did was it appended the data that the user entered into a URL. So you could just change the URL and bypass the form altogether. I think I just figured out how to bypass. There's a there's a coupon printer thing that only lets you do like two per username. Yeah. So. By the way, that, what we're doing yeah. right by the what we're doing right now is uh, is pretty much what people do when they start testing Hacks. databases for uh, SQL injection. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, awesome. you just you just because I mean, if you see a SQL database, it's got a really long URL. Yeah. People can just start pushing values into that that string to see if the URL if the SQL server falls over. That's yeah. awesome. If this form had hidden fields, you could change change them easily, but just changing the URL, even if it's not available apparent in the form, yeah. you could just... Which, by the way, we, we're not doing it right now because we don't have the time, but this would be a really good place to sanitize your inputs because yes. you <laughs> need to make sure that someone didn't say, the name of my bunny is Drop Tables, <laughs> yeah. because that would be bad. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pr trying to provide easy examples that just show the right. basics and... It, Really, if I was doing this, I would have all sorts of error checking, like, oh, you didn't actually enter something here. Or, yeah, right. you entered this invalid value that has uh, pluses and semicolons and everything, which um, just trying to keep it simple for these examples. Right, right. Now, what I really like about this, Patrick, is if people are freaking out, if they're looking at your code going, this is too difficult, go back to episodes two through four, because this is just a rehash of code he's already shown you. So if you were able to understand episodes two and four, this is just taking that code and wrapping it around, mm -hmm. uh, wrapping it with a, with a piece of script that allows it to work on the web. That's all it is. We got a pretty interesting one down here from Esol. He said, this is why you want to use post instead of get. But Esol post isn't safe either. Stop uh. cheating. And, and we're not getting to post till next week. But yeah, it's, it's not like, Oh, post makes all the problems go away. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. It's just as vulnerable. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just it's a just little different. harder. All right, Patrick, what else you got? Uh, one more example. And this one, I took the same thing. I added a few more fields. But here we've got checkboxes and Whoa. radio buttons. Oh, boy. So if you want to see how this buttons. happens, well, favorite animal, I'm going to say. This looks like a, hip, one of those trivia pages. Hippo. In the 90s. Animal's name is Brian. <laughs> what does the animal eat? Uh, <laughs> Vegetables, meat, not, not so much seeds. We'll say, hey, is this animal cute? Um, Are there, is there an sure. entry for steam buns? <laughs> I could have put steam oh, buns in this form. Hands. And this is just the HTML over here. We've got uh, just checkbox and radio. Yeah. You can see the value is food for all four of these and cute for these two. Uh, so there's going to be something interesting that happens here when we submit. Uh, you can see the query string has Look at that URL, food, Brian. food, food, and one value of cute. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so it said, you said hippo eats hay. Okay, whatever. I hope Brian brings you joy anyway. At least Brian is cute. Aw. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> and uh, so if we look at the code for this, I kept everything the same. Uh, going down here, I've got uh, animal name, but then I have the uh, mm -hmm. if food it eats, and then I print the name. But because hay was the last one checked, it's the last one in the order, oh, the way I've got this set up, up, it's only doing that. Wow. So if I was doing this uh, for a legitimate program, I would have to go through and make sure I get every value of hay in the URL. Right. And so that would need a for loop and uh, more stuff. More uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in this code, I, I, like, I had signed name an animal up above, but down here I'm just calling this the these variables directly without reassigning them. Just if it's cute, say this. If it's not, then say what do you mean? Isn't and it's <laughs> doing more down here? So 
Yeah, we'll have this, ho if they uh, didn't this code get up our in lame. the. <laughs> yeah. We'll have this code yeah. up on our yeah. GitHub. So, so, GitHub. so everybody can, can look at it. it. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, uh, Patrick, I, I, we've only got two episodes left, and I know <gasps> next week we're going to be dealing with posts because we got to figure out the other, the other way to pull data in. I I'm, can't wait for that. I'm wondering if, be, because we, we do believe this, we've always said that we, we believe you should sanitize your input, should we show them at least a rudimentary way that they could sanitize the inputs being uh, coming off of forms? Yeah, I think we can do that. And, uh, yeah, we can't be a good time to do that. And uh, regular expressions come in really handy for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can show them how to hack the forum if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, no, I mean, uh, right now, uh, actually, I think that's the homework. The homework is figure out what sites out there are <laughs> sanitizing their inputs. Report back. No, don't do that. If we tell <laughs> you to do that, they, they, we'll, oh, we'll get in great. trouble. No, but there, there are a lot of sites out there that are not sanitizing those inputs. They have oh, yeah. really crappy forms hitting a SQL database, and you're like, I could just type anything in here, and the SQL yeah. database will take it. Uh, that's essentially what's happening, and that, that's what we're going to try to teach you not to let happen. Hmm. I have a form I need to check. Hacks. I'm not going to tell you guys where it is. Hacks. Lots of hacks. <laughs> Lots of hacks. Poops.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, but Patrick, okay, of course, we're going to be covering uh, f uh, more forms next week with Post, but uh, I, I want to thank you very much for being our Code Warrior again. Can you tell the folks where they can find you? They can find me on Twitter. I'm at P. Delahanty, and also uh, check out my website, chibiproject.com. I mentioned it last week, but we have a brand new episode where we take a Dremel to a Game Boy. Woohoo! No, stop so. that! Man, <laughs> That's what we do. Childhood. We destroy stuff. That's awesome. That's the whole thing. <laughs> And that was actually recorded like two years ago, but I finally posted it. Oh my it. gosh. <laughs> Chibi project destroying everything I loved <laughs> in my childhood. Chibi. Oh, no, actually, thank you, Patrick. Oh, my we, pleasure. We love you. And uh, thanks for opening our eyes to, uh, to something that I think a lot of us take for granted. You know, when, when we think about forms, we just think we just oh, type it in, hit submit. Once you understand actually what's happening in the background, I, I think you get a bit more respect for what the programmers had to do to make that happen. Again, that's Patrick Delahanty. Our code warrior, we salute you, sir. Oh, oh Mr. Monday, no. Coding 101 is not canceled. No. Two episodes left for the module. We change so we modules. Do, we do eight episodes per module per coding language. So we did eight of C Sharp, eight of Python, and then eight of Perl. In, in between each one of those, we have two episodes where we do a couple of really cool interviews. Which, by the people. way, I think we've finally got those lined up. Uh, we, I think I know one. Uh, yes, unless unless the, uh, unless we have a fall through, we believe we're getting a representative from from Google for Go, so yeah. he'll be able to talk about Go and all the cool things about that language. And the other one, I, I think you know. I think I do, yeah. Mr. Uh, Darren Kitchen. Maybe, maybe Darren Kitchen is going to come from, on and tell us a little something, something. No, kind of familiar. Maybe some of the some of the blocker side of programming. <laughs> Be I better sanitize that input right yeah, now. Actually. Yeah, you better. No, seriously, you better. <laughs> now, and now, we know that this is a lot of information for you to take in, and you're not going to be able to get it on the first pass. So if you want to find our episodes in any way, shape, or form, any possible format that you want, you can always find it on our show notes page, which is twit.tv slash code or twit.tv slash coding 101. And either yep. way, we'll get you there. Make sure to check out the GitHub link in each of the episode's show notes. That is where you can find the code for each and every episode. Also, make sure to follow us over on iTunes. You can just search for Coding 101 in the iTunes podcast area, and you can find us there. Please subscribe. Let all your friends know about it. and Tell them to subscribe, too. Yeah. And download the show every week. Yes, and I know that in the past we've been telling you to go to gplus.to slash uh, twit coding 101. Uh, that's not working right now, so just, yeah. We do have the new uh, Google do. Plus, the legit Google Plus link. It's plus.google.com slash twit coding 101. Absolutely. You can go over there, join our awesome community. We check it out every single week to see what you guys are up to, and thank you so, so much for sharing your coding examples with us, too. We love showing those off on the show. Yeah, and don't forget to push them in there, because Shannon pulls from that community to I find do. examples for each and every single episode. They're we, also really helpful for me, too, oh whenever yeah, I'm yeah. learning about oh, this stuff. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what level you are. You could be beginner, advanced, or expert. That's a great community to be, to be a part 
part of. Because if you're an expert, you can impart your knowledge on the people who are, who are growing in the coding world. And if you're a noob, you get to reach out to people who have been doing this for years and years and years. It's a win. It's a win-win for everyone. It's true. Very true. Also, we're on uh, YouTube, aren't we? Yeah, you can find us at uh, youtube.com slash twitcoding101. We understand that most of the people actually watch this show on the download from the RSS feeds. That's cool. But if you want to catch it on YouTube, we offer it because, hey, we loves you. <laughs> now, uh, Google properties aren't the only place that you could find us. You can also find us on Twitter. At least I'm on Twitter. I'm at PadreSJ. And I'm at Snubs. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't forget that if you're going you're gonna to be joining us, why not join us live? We're, this is like real, We're right? doing live. We're doing live, yeah. Every Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, you can find us at live.twit.tv. And as long as you're watching us live, jump into the chat room. You, you see us grab questions mm -hmm. from the chat room because our chat room is filled with some really, really bright people, yes. including T. Joe Code for Sale LLC. He's been a longtime member of, of, uh, of the community since day one, actually. In fact, he was one of the people who was asking Leo for a coding show. Uh, we're trying to set up something with him where we're going to have him come in and do two guest coding awesome. episodes. It's awesome. Make sure you join us at irc.twit.tv. Until next time, I think we're about done, right? I think we are. I'm Shannon Morse. I'm Father Robert Ballos here. End of line. Bunny. Oh. Oh my god. Look at them bunnies. Bunnies have the lumps. Oh.